So health potions. <laughs> How important is it giving players the right amount of information at the right time? I think that would be rather useful. What do you think? <laughs> <laughs> no, I think it would have removed the joy of us dying so much that's ever. True. We've never died that much. That was not fun. even in a paranoia game. No. Well, that's something um, we know about first edition, don't we? Is it's really deadly. Yeah. yeah. Um, especially the Gygax modules where you go to a table and like, there's some food there. Do you try the food? Oh, you all die. It's like, yeah, yeah. oh my gosh. Or you get done, like you get three more levels or whatever. Yeah. It's like really, um, yeah. I like the fact that I got the riddle right without actually getting the riddle right. Yeah, <laughs> well done, Murray. <laughs> it's just crazy. <laughs> uh, I'm sorry to all of you who've actually gone through that and worked out what it was. That's why when he proposed E, I'm just like, yeah, should we, yeah, you're just going to give the answer? That's fine, you can give the answer now if you like. No, go ahead and give the answer. That's right, because I think wow. this is great. Murray's like consistently worked out logic on this piece of paper here. <laughs> like I wrote out the alphabet, then I wrote out the numbers of the letters, and then I went, mm. where's the pattern? Mm. It's got to be E. I love that <laughs> you assume that for a, that's how you solve the riddle for a game that's aimed at 11 year olds. Yeah, that's right. Oh, that's yeah. Like that, eh? Riddles like that are looking at... Age 10 and up. Mm. Looking at patterns, and that's mm. the pattern I saw. Mm. So this, I mean, th we never really do a dungeon crawl like that. I mean, that was a really classic dungeon that crawl. That was, with... I've never drawn a map, or oh, I haven't since I was a kid. Uh, drawn I, think, I think it's really interesting having the map and getting lost and doing the whole west-left thing. Especially when the DM doesn't even know it's <laughs> Well, there is that. We were going backwards <laughs> through the module. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, but then at the same time, I think the great thing is when you've got the fog of war, even the way we do maps, mm. that fog of war makes it dull. Because, oh, you've got this room. Yeah, Whereas right. the whole kind of like, you come into a room and there's a door in a corridor and you're like, ah. Uh, yeah, and if you're not and careful and you start to get off a little bit, shape, you can. And then, because what if we had a big dungeon, you could say, well, you go south and, oh, you're in the trophy room. Hang on, I thought we were going to. And then you'd suddenly have to try and rearrange about that. Well, really like the corridor that led into the darkness that we couldn't contemplate because it actually led off the map. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Is that really what it says? Uh, no, no, full of fear. There's just a corridor that ends up off the map and there's nowhere. That's right. Yeah, it. I'm not sure. I didn't. I, we were backwards at that point. I had no idea what number we were meant to be up. So, yeah. The one to the west did say it was back to the other adventurer mm -hmm. and then, you know, encouraging not to near, go near the ghouls and stuff. That was really interesting. So, yeah. I, wonder, I wonder if in real life it's so much easier to get your bearings if you can visualise where you are. Like if yeah, we were using, say, you know those, what are those dwarf tile things? that you, Yeah, dwarven forge. Dwarven yeah. forge tiles where you're putting them there and even if you took them away again and placed new ones up there as mm. around a corner, whether you could visualise it would actually be easier to map in your mind. Well, it's tricky because I'm, told, like, cause I'm, not, a, I'm yeah. not so much an audible... Well, I know from a caving that if you, yeah. you can get completely disoriented yeah. underground. Mm. I'm sure. Like even, even, yeah. even going into the city, if you don't know your way around the um, subterranean parts of Sydney, you'll, oh, come, no, up, granted, you'll come up Giving your hell location. I'm not, I'm not, that's not my point. Like, I'm not saying that it's, you're not going to get lost, but it's more like whether or not it's easier to visualise it with a physical thing mm. than it is to, say, drawing a map based off yeah. what Ben was saying to me. Yeah. And I'm going northwest, east, south. Whereas if I had the image there, I could see a door, I'd probably be able to. Have a much I better think if understanding you're in, on spatial uh, yeah. distances and I think if you're adventuring you'd have to be really careful to map correctly. And if yeah. the if it was laid out on a grid, I think you'd have a fair chance. Yeah. But mm -hmm. if it was anything like a cave and just drifted a little bit to the right, because yeah. I remember seeing the Mythbusters did blindfold to walk straight across the field. Yeah, and they yeah. couldn't. Mm. Like they just looped, they literally looped around in circles trying to yeah. walk yeah, straight. Yeah. But I think yeah. the thing is of course when you look at maps, the history of maps, you know, the grid wasn't invented because the that sense of yeah. how you yeah. measure wasn't, wasn't yeah. actually in existence mm. until very very late so all those maps and I mean most of our maps today are not accurate like you look at the the mm. underground maps mm. they, yeah. they are representation yeah, because yeah, the yeah, distances aren't right so you, you go oh yeah there's a room and there's a door you wouldn't go that's 60 feet mm. and you wouldn't have a you wouldn't have a precise scale you'd have big room yeah that's room. right yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, had, mm. I mean, the adventure was never intended to be played in that fashion at all. It's a choose-your-own-adventure just to teach you the principles of the game, which I think it, those first two adventures do that fantastically mm. in the players. Is there play. a third one where that room... That there, there's a whole... There, then there's actually one laid out as a proper module in the Dungeon Master's Guide, uh, which is for much... A party. For, for a party. For you to run as a Dungeon Master. Should we run that? So, so let's do that again sometime. Yeah. That'd be great. Yeah, great. good. Um, cause I, and I love the flavour of this game. I mean, I think well, the got, simplicity in the rules is great. We've got three characters named Andrew now. That's right. <laughs> Andrew, 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 and Yaroslav. <laughs> I think they reset. <laughs> I think they reset. Charlie was the only one that made it through that. Oh. Yeah. I mean, we, they, we reset it for this this one, so we may as well yeah. reset again. Mm. I just want you to have two shields, so you like you can't hit anything. <laughs> 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 well, no, I think it's the ones. Your armor class is one. Yeah. 
Do you want you want magic shields? Then you got to have a you know, minus one, minus mm -hmm. two. Mm. Fantastic. Any other thoughts on first edition? It's just fine. I think I think it's really interesting because the, the 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 description at the beginning is very much centered on your imagination. Yeah. And then the yeah the rules are they're not restricting, but they aren't encouraging of that kind of mm. idea, which is what we were doing in the other games, whereby you know. I hit it with my sword, mm, and yet mm. the game itself is designed not to be that. It's to be all the visuals that you and that, when and I, that yeah. it became. And when I played mm. it when I was ten, it was just you know sort of rolling the dice, and then you'd like write down like you know nine hundred thousand gold pieces mm. from the dragon. You add that onto the list, and you tally it all yep. up, and yeah, yeah. And that and was the pleasure of it. Yeah. 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 Um, whereas the third edition, for instance, yeah, did, did and, and through second edition, it encouraged more and more tactical mm. in terms of of, of uh, where you could get to, and whether you're on a table or down mm. on the floor, and whether you have this and. And so that encouraged role playing, or at least simulationistism yep. in in the battles. Mm. Yeah, it's yeah. interesting. I also love that it had to describe what role playing is. Like, it, you yeah. know, imagine. Oh, it's amazing. You, there's no technology, and the yeah. whole like the whole breaking down of, you know, everything is like you know you've got to stop thinking yeah. the way yeah. you're thinking. It's this is the mindset you have to be in to mm. play this yeah. game. And it's, it's all here. It's funny when and you the, read the character and the player are different. Yeah. yeah. It's funny when you read a lot of new. Uh, RPGs, they still have that. Mm -hmm. They yeah, still have yeah, that. Yeah, have the to. basics of role playing. If you're not familiar to role playing, and it's funny because when you when you enter a game, if you read it in that way, you read a new game that doesn't do that and assumes that all the people reading mm. know what role playing mm. is. Mm. It's almost kind of a like an elitist thing. Mm. Whereas when you read a game, even though it's you know forty years into this hobby, that yeah. doesn't that does have that intro. It's kind of like it's got like the basics, and you're like good. Even if you don't read them, yeah. Yeah. now they just sell it separately. And the passion that GM comes, guy. yeah, the passion that comes through this book is so—it's so full on, and exciting, mm -hmm. and sure of itself. And we found a—we found a mistake. We yeah, found a mistake, that. isn't that amazing? Oh, yeah. yeah. I mean, this is the first printing, so I guess yeah. There you go. Mm -hmm. Imagine mm -hmm. that. <laughs> I bet you there's more than one mistake in it. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. So well done for these guys who printed this amazing product, which Frank is Mensa. Yeah, which which has gone through history and yeah, introduced me to Dungeons and Dragons. I got this when I was on on holidays. In a tent, living in a tent um, up on the north coast, and it came in the red you box. Were, were you living in a tent? I'm not living in no. a tent on holidays. In oh, tent. Just, just to clarify, <laughs> so this is, ben is not from the you know. And, and I, I could have paid right. the rent, but choose. That's right. I, I rubbed the crayon into the dice, and then and then rubbed it off, and, and then played it. And it was just amazing for a ten-year-old to come across this game. So so, thank you for all the joy you've given, Red Box. And others of us have come far later to the game. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Very recent. Yeah. I like it. Lovely. And if you have any questions, post them below because we'd love to hear from you. Yep. You know, jump on the Facebook group. What is it? Forward slash five. You can find Search it. Search for Dice Stormers on Facebook. We'll put links in the blade. Yeah, make sure you yep. like us and favorite us and everything. And It um, helps us out. It means that we can, you know, get more videos up so we yeah. can, more people can see. Mm. Great. Bye. Bye. Bye.